The congregation of Emmanuel Ministry Church welcomes you to I Am Alive with Pastor Philip Trent, minister of the gospel for more than 25 years. Now get your Bible and a notebook and let's join Pastor Trent as he preaches the uncompromised Word of God. Well, praise the Lord and welcome again to I'm Alive. My name's Philip Trent. I pastor Emanuel Ministry Church over in Hart County, Kentucky. We're located about seven miles east of Horse Cave on Highway 218 in the community of Lee Grand. We're right around the curb past the Lee Grand Elementary School on the left there. Our schedule of services, uh, we start at, on uh, Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock with prayer there in the sanctuary. And at 9.30, we have our Sunday school program. And then at 10.30, we have our worship program and preaching and teaching of the Word and sharing the communion, water baptisms, and all kind of things that's going on. And uh, I'm not sure exactly the date of this program. Let's see, 16th, 23rd. I guess probably tomorrow night will be the 31st. So our Hallelujah Night's coming up uh, October the 31st. Uh, we offer an, a safe place for people to come. Uh, and just have good activities, and we share uh, meals, soups, and various things together, and the children have a big time playing, and uh, we have a good place there in our gymnasium in the basement level of our facility. So we invite you to bring your family and uh, come out and enjoy the festivities with us if you desire to. And uh, it's not for us, it's not about getting a bunch of candy and apples and things, although there will be trunk treats at the end. Uh, so if you're coming just to get candy, you, you probably won't, you probably don't want to do that. Uh, but we will have candy and stuff at the end of our program uh, for our kids and uh, trunk treats. Uh, but during the, during the time, uh, a couple of hours, we have uh, activities there in the gymnasium, all kind of activities for children and food for adults and just fellowship and just having a good time. So we invite you to come October 31st if you desire to. Uh, but we also have services on Wednesday nights at 630 in the basement level of our facility there. And we're just, uh, we're just tickle pink, just happy to to do the things and to share in the Word of God. And coming up real soon, we're going to be on uh, end times, studying the end time activities. Probably by the latter part of November, uh, 1st of December, we'll get into that study of end times, and it'll probably go through into the next spring. So uh, praise God. We're just enjoying life and having a good time and seeing people get saved and uh, filled with the Holy Ghost and healed and delivered, and God is good all the time. Amen. Well, God is good. Yes, He's good. He's good all the time. God is good. Oh, He's good. He's good all the time. Well, you may be facing trouble. But just keep this in mind. God is good. Yes, He's good. He's good all the time. Amen. He's a good, 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 good God. A good, good Father, as the song says. Amen. And He's a way maker. I left you last week with the song Way Maker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, A Light in the Darkness. I pray that you've had a good week serving the Lord and just enjoying the presence of God. And uh, so let's get into this program here tonight. Would you pray with me? Dear God in heaven, we're just grateful for another opportunity to be here by way of TV and these people's homes and businesses or however they're watching this program. And they may be watching it on a DVD or YouTube. Uh, but if, Father, I know there's no time or distance in the realm of the Spirit. What I've ministered uh, during this program uh, these programs that if people trust in you, rely upon you, and cling to you, you can do for them what we've been teaching about uh, if it's 10 years down the road. Whenever, because uh, your word is timeless and you're an almighty God, there's nothing too hard for you, and I'm grateful for that. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the Word of God. And we pray, Father, that your kingdom would come and your will would be done in all of our lives and everything that you have for us would come into manifestation 
and that we would reach our divine destiny, that our eyes of our understanding would be enlightened, that we might know your, your perfect will for our lives. I pray for our watching audience that their eyes of their spirit be enlightened, that they may know the hope of your call upon their lives and every single one of them come to full manifestation of what you have for them through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Bless this uh, place here, Father, this TV station and uh, Brother Marvy and these engineers, these workers. I, I pray and I thank you, Lord, for those that's underwritten the expenses of our program. Invoke your richest blessings upon all of them. May your kingdom come and your will be done. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, God is good and God is faithful. God is merciful. A couple of weeks ago, I talked to you about Paul's fear. He feared that as the devil had, uh, uh, had beguiled Eve and uh, Adam uh, in the beginning, that uh, we have been somewhat deceived or, or uh, um, what's the word he used, beguiled by the devil uh, from the simplicity that's in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I, I, I want to go back and read that scripture. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, if my Bible will participate with me. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3, Paul said, I fear, least by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his craftiness, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Jesus Christ. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, whom we have not received, or another gospel which we, which we have not accepted, you might well bear with him." Uh, so Paul is telling them that the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that Paul preached is sufficient, and I believe it is. I, I certainly do, and I, I, I mean, I may talk about Paul sometimes, maybe more than I talk about Jesus, but I don't mean to do that because there's no salvation in Paul. Our salvation comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, Paul talked about uh, the gospel that he brought to them the gospel, and I, I'm looking for that scripture, I think it's right here in, in Corinthians, that he did not shun to uh, bring them the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that Jesus, uh, he, he suffered and he died for all of us, and he was buried for all of us, and he's raised again. Basically, three elements of the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's the simplicity of God, that when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you're joined to him. Now, li listen to this scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and uh, let's start with... Um, I start with verse 4. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ, that in everything you are enriched by him. So it's talking about Jesus, what, what we have in Jesus, in all utterance, in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you've come behind in no gift waiting for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you unto the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we, we're saved by Jesus. We're made perfect by Jesus. We, everything we need is in Jesus. In Him uh, that we live and move and have our being, uh, it's, it's all based upon the accomplishments of what Jesus Christ hath done for us, amen, that we're blameless in the day. It, it's not because you lived right. I think you ought to live right. I'm going to aim to live right. If I'm not living right, I, I want you to say something to me about it. Yes, we need to live right. But my salvation is not based upon me living right. It's based upon what Jesus Christ accomplished for me. 
and me trusting him, relying upon him, sticking to him like glue. You remember three weeks ago I talked about that? We trust him, rely upon, cling to, stick to him like glue. It's all in what Jesus Christ has accomplished for us. God is faithful by whom you are called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Not only we are in a relationship with God through Jesus, but we're called into fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. Think about that. Now, what, what, what is this fellowship? Well, fellowship is a bunch of fellows in the same ship. <laughs> we're in this thing together. We're joined to God through Jesus Christ. Think about this. In, the, in Romans chapter 8, and about verse, um, what is that, 16 or 17? If children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ. The simplicity of Jesus Christ. Being born again, you have come to be a child of God. God Almighty is your heavenly Father. Your heavenly Father knows how to take care of you. Again, we talk about the shepherd, Jesus Christ, who leads us beside the still waters. Why? Because he don't want you as a big fluffy sheep getting off in them rushing waters and get washed away. He leads us beside the still waters. He leads us into green pastures. He knows where the good grazing's at. If we'll listen to Jesus... And heed his voice. And I know there's a lot of people that thinks that's bunk and junk. Well, if you do, all I know is say, if you don't believe in the voice of Jesus, maybe you're not saved. I'm telling you, the Lord is my shepherd. And as my shepherd, I hear his voice. Now, you write me off if you want to. That, you wouldn't be the first one to do that. But Jesus speaks to me. And I want to believe if you're a child of God, he speaks to you. I don't know why in the world he wouldn't. Jesus said in John's Gospel 10 and 27, my sheep hear my voice. See, the whole thing, Old, Old Testament and New, is the Lord is my shepherd. He leads me. How does he lead me? Well, he ain't out here with his, his cane and the crook around my neck dragging me. <laughs> I can see that dragging me in the green, me with all four of my feet stuck out, not wanting to go. No, he's not doing that. He's calling me into green pastures. He's saying, over here, Phil, Phil, come over here. Boy, look at this. Look what they got to eat over here. Come over here and drink this. Don't drink over there. Come over here and drink because I want you to be safe. I mean, the Lord is my shepherd. He leads me. He speaks to me. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Yes, I sure do. We're joined, joined heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about that. God is faithful by whom he has called us into fellowship, of the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So we're talking about trusting in, confiding in, leaning on the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn in your Bible with me to Proverbs. I love this scripture here in the book of Proverbs and Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, and we'll start with verse 1. Uh, my highlighted scripture is actually verse 5, but we'll start with verse 1. Proverbs 3 and 1, my son. So, we, you know, to me, he's talking, I take it, he's talking to me, his son. Now, here in the Old Testament, Basically, the prophet, priest, and king were the one that heard from the Lord. But they spoke in behalf of the Lord, just like the commandments that God gave Moses to the people. He spoke to Moses. God spoke to Moses to the people. So here he's saying, my son, our daughter, or whoever you are, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Uh, you know, just think about this in this context. If you'll listen to the Lord and let the Lord lead you into the pastures, into the waters, into where you should, don't you think he's got the best idea of long life for you? Don't you think he knows how to take care of you probably better 
than your nutritionist does. I'm not against the nutritionist, but the Lord knows how to, I mean, you know, there may be something you need to, you need to eat some dandelions or something. I don't know. The Lord will lead you and guide you uh, for long life. I really do believe that. I believe long life and good days are in His will and plan and purpose for you. Why would God want to kill you off? He just got you down here. In the essence of eternity, in the essence of the realm where God's at, you just been here, you know, when He says, give me a second. I mean, what's a second to God? I mean, He's timeless. You just got here. Maybe you're, I'm 73 years old last, last week. But that's just, that's just itty bitty in the time of God, right? So I think he, with long life, he wants to satisfy us. I believe if we'll heed his voice, listen to him, obey him, trust him. Now you, you may have loved ones that died real young. I know accidents happen and all, and I'm not damning or dooming nobody to hell, nothing like that. I'm just saying from God's scheme of things, just like you want your children to live long upon the earth, you want them to live a good, blessed, prosperous life. How much more the Father, amen? For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to you. What, what will add to you? If you'll heed the voice of God and the commandments of God. We're talking about listening to the shepherd, the simplicity of Christ. The simplicity is, I know you can take this Bible apart. You can take the Hebrew and the Greek apart. But listen, when you get so smart in your brain that you're not listening to the voice of the shepherd, you're too smart. The simplicity of Christ is God loves you and God will lead you and God will guide you and direct you. Certainly we need to listen to the Scripture. We need to know the Scripture so we'll make sure the voice we're listening to is the voice of the Good Shepherd <laughs> as much as anything. That's why we need to know the Word of God because God will never lead you in spite of or contradicting the Word of God. He'll always lead you in line, in line with and in light of the Word. Amen. For length of days and long life shall they, and peace shall they. You like peace? I do. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the tablet of thine heart. How impor, important is mercy and truth? He said, don't let it, don't, don't, don't let it get away from you. Hang on to mercy and truth. Bind them about their neck. <laughs> now, you know, when you think about that, it, to me, it's, get, it's getting it down in your soul. Your spirit, you have a soul, you live in a physical body. You're a triune being. You are a spiritual being. You'll never cease to be. You are a spirit being with a soul. You're able to, uh, to think. You're able to make decisions, you're able to analyze, and you live in a physical flesh and bone body. You're triune. Amen. So we need to, to, to think about that and let the Spirit of God lead us and guide us and direct us and teach us. Some people go by feelings. It's all about feelings. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, I like feelings. But feelings that line up with the Word of God is what I'm talking about. Because sometimes people get these weird feelings and it's not biblical. <laughs> it's not biblically sound to go by what they feel. But praise God, I love it when the feeling of the Spirit of God's leadership and direction is in line with the Word of God. And I can not only see it, but I can hear it and I can feel it. Boy, there's three witnesses. I see it, I feel it, I hear it. Boom. That's good stuff right there. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the tablet of thine heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. I mean, this, this works in every area of your life. So if you'll get a hold of the Word of God and let the Word of God get a hold of you, and you'll, you'll, you'll bind it. What we're talking about? We, we're talking about taking it in to the point that now I'm one with it. I'm one with Jesus, and He's one with me. I'm an heir and joint heir. I'm talking about the simplicity of the Lord Jesus. I haven't taken away from Jesus. 
Now, I'm in the Old Testament, but I'm still talking about the simplicity of Jesus because when Jesus comes alive in your spirit, then all these things are enhanced, that he enhances the Word of God. The study that you have, Jesus enhances that study. It makes it more real. It, it makes it more powerful in your life. Amen? So you shall find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Here we go. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Now, when you trust with all thine heart, how much is that? That's all, isn't it? <laughs> you don't, you don't trust, you trust the Lord with all of your heart. You don't trust yourself. You don't trust your work. You don't trust your ability. You're trusting in what Jesus Christ has accomplished for you in his death, burial, and resurrection, the simplicity of the Lord Jesus Christ. God simply loved us so much that he sent his only son to suffer, bleed, and die, and pay for the crimes and the wrongs that we had done, that by and through him we could be saved. Thanks be to God. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct the path. In all of our ways acknowledge him. What do you mean? First and foremost, I aim to do everything I do by the Word of God and the direction of the Spirit of God. I don't aim to make a decision without the peace of God being involved in that. I don't make a decision about anything except I be led by the Holy Ghost. If the Holy Ghost is not in it, I don't want to get in it. I don't want no part of it. So I, it don't make no difference what I'm doing. I want the Holy Spirit's leadership and guidance and presence to be involved in that. It's how little does you take that down to? Well, I, to be honest with you, you know I like to eat. You can tell me. But if I was fixing to eat something, the Spirit of God inside of me said, don't do it, I wouldn't eat it. And I love to eat. So that's how important it is to me. I want to listen to his voice and everything. Are you, are you saying you're some big something? No, I'm just telling you I live and listen to the voice of God. I, he, he directs me in everything I say and do. Now, have I made mistakes before? Yes, I have, and I've apologized to God, and I'll apologize to you if I've offended you. I trust in the Lord with all of my heart, and I do not lean on my own understanding. In all my ways, I'm going to acknowledge Jesus Christ. I am a Christian. I'm a born-again child of God. I'm not ashamed of that And before anybody they say, well, they're going to cut your head off if you tell them. Well, you know, I don't want my head cut off, but I'm not ashamed of Jesus. I'll just tell you that right now. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Yeah, I aim to do that too. It, it shall be health to thy navel and myrrh to thy bones. That's both important, isn't it? You need health and you need myrrh to have good health. Myrrh in the bones, uh, uh, inside strength of the bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thine increase. We aim to do that. Linda and I tithe. We give the Lord what belongs to him, and we sow seeds of offerings on a continual basis. We do that. I'm not bragging on me. I'm just telling you we do that. We don't shun that part. We tithe on every dime that we take in, a tenth part of everything that we take in. Yes, before taxes before insurance, before anything comes out, we tithe because the tithe is the Lord's. Amen. So I've proven God. The Lord says one place there, he said, prove me. And I proved the Lord there. And my wife is what really got me into that. She was a young Baptist girl. We got born again. We got uh, uh, married. She's a young Baptist and I'm a coming Presbyterian. And we served the Lord together, and I guess uh, maybe her her teaching was a little strong in that area than mine. I don't I don't fault maybe I wasn't listening right, but she proved to me that we should be tithing, giving the tenth part to the church. So we began to do that, 
And uh, I'm telling you, the Lord has blessed us supernatural through the years. You know, it was easy to give a tenth part to the church. I say easy, it wasn't real easy. But you look back at it, if you're making $100 a week, $10, $10 to the church, that's one thing. But that's still a tenth, isn't it? But now you make all this money, you give this big money away, you say, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's still a tithe. The tithe belongs to God. Amen. So honor the Lord with thy substance and the first fruits of all thine increase. Yes, first fruits. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. What's he talking about? I'm not a wine drinker. I don't drink wine. I've never, I've, I say I never tasted wine. I did one time. They served communion that had real wine with it. It had a heartburn like I never had in my life. <laughs> but I have tasted wine. I do remember that. But we don't drink wine. We're not wine drinkers. I, I think he's talking about the necessities of life. It's like seek first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Whatever things it is that you need, I believe when you honor the Lord Jesus Christ, you do what he tells you to do, and the things you need in this life, it will come across thy pathway you'll have an opportunity to have all the things that you need. Amen. God is such a good God. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst with My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. I don't despise his chastening. I'm aiming to follow the Lord. I aim to do what, he, what, what would be right. I follow the, the word of God. I follow the leadership of God. But if I was to go wrong... If I was to do something wrong, God chastens me through his word. I don't ever remember my dad, and he was a wonderful father, W.R. Trent, whipping me. I, I, he may have. I don't ever remember his whipping, but I do remember his talks. I remember when he would talk to me about something I did wrong or I shouldn't have done or I should have done, the, the words that he expressed to me, he chastened me with his word. Now, he didn't promise to beat the fire at him and nothing like that. It wasn't that. But he corrected me with his word, and that's how God does it. Dear, today, friends, you know, if you've done something wrong, God's not going to cause you to have a wreck. No, God's not going to blow your house down. God's not going to send a hurricane across you, your property. no. Do you think the only people that does wrongs is the people on the coast? You know, if God's behind the hurricane, why ain't hurricanes up in the middle of the country? You know there's people up in there doing wrong. God ain't behind. It's just natural things that take place in this world. No, God is a good God, and he'll chasten you like he chastens me through his word. Chastisement by the word of God, the preaching of the word. Some people quit going to church because they got under conviction. They didn't like to hear it. Well, it was God chastening you with his word. He says, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. Because he loves you whom the Father loves, he corrects, and the Father, Son, whom he delighteth. And when you quit going to church because of conviction, you quit listening to God's correction. He loves you. And that's why he chastens you with his word. Amen. That's how he does it. Are you waiting for God to, to, to knock you the side of the head? Or to, uh, you know, make your truck blow up or something? Your washer to quit working? No, he's not into that mess. That's bunk and junk. God corrects you through the discipleship of his word. Listen and allow him. Let me read that again. That's so important. I, I know. My son or daughter, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as the father of the son in whom he delighteth. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. God bless you. I thank you for listening to our program. I trust you're doing well and uh, we'll see you here next week right here on I Am Alive. God bless. Yeah.